Hi there, I've been away for a while. Since my last video was about how I hated my sketchbooks, I thought that this time I would talk about paintings that I actually love, paintings of mine. And to do that, I have to look back at some of my older work because I always feel you need to take uh, some time, you need to put some distance between yourself and your work to be able to actually appreciate it and look at it with fresh eyes. Hi, I'm Fiona Di Pinto and this is Drawings in a Drawer and here we talk about everything watercolour and more. I upload almost every week, sorry for not introducing myself. I want to dive right into looking at this painting. It's quite unusual for me. I love the fact that this eye is almost lost in space. I love the jagged shadow on the face and what's going on down in the chest, which is almost like a completely different painting, all rolled into one. when I started to incorporate landscapes into my work. So going down, we have the snowy woodland in her chest area, this path leading into somewhere mysterious, somewhere that the viewer can imagine. So it could be a memory. And I just think that landscapes incorporated into portraits add so much mystery and uh, so much depth to a painting. I left the face quite simple here because the focus wasn't supposed to be just the eyes, her expression, but again, the story that was being told by the landscape. This one's more recent. It was my homage to Frida Kahlo and I did this and some of the other paintings you will see on here on my Patreon as tutorials. And I love this because of the way I used colour in it and because of those horizontal drips which were something new that I tried in this painting and I really like the effects that I got in her skin. I just think it represents her so well as well as the symbolisms that I added in her neck and as her earrings. And here is uh, Mother Nature or Madre Natura and this is again an older painting and I have to say if I say so myself, I love so many things about this painting. There's so much detail in it, uh, the little animals all over her body as if they were part of her body and the detail I put into them and the hands, the pose, her face, the expression just looks so relaxed. I managed to convey exactly what I was wanting to convey with this painting and that is always a bit of a rarity for me so that's why I love it. And that overlapped with this other painting, which I really love, mostly because it's a man. I very rarely paint men. I really love the green in the skin and the fact that he seems to be part of this vegetation in the background. For some paintings like this one, I just like the eyes, the pattern in the background, the overall result, and there's not much to say. So I think I will also have a video uh, the same exact video as this but with just music and no narration on top of it so i will upload that in a couple of days maybe and this is edith holden if you don't know her she wrote the country diary of an edwardian lady and she was an illustrator she loved to paint with watercolor nests birds berries flowers plants whatever she found on her walks and I like the way I portrayed her, so I think I represented her in her element. She's looking very untidy, her hair is very messy. I imagine that she would not be careful about looking good or keeping clean during her walks while she was out exploring, so I like the fact that I think I was quite able to capture that with this piece. <laughs> And Billie Holiday, I love her coming out of this dark background. I love her expression and the petals down on her neck. 
also represent the pain and suffering she went through in her life. The red of almost of blood representing uh, the sorrow. And in these next two paintings, what I like are the eyes, the brush strokes and the way I used the paint in them. Memories of Colleen and it was one of the first times that I really used splatters freely on the face. I absolutely love it. It's one of my top 10 favourites, I think. Not always the paintings I like are the ones that others like or that my audience likes, but this is definitely one of my favourites. paintings are in stark contrast with each other. This one is very sharp. We have that sharp shadow defining the eye, like framing the eye. And the next one is almost unfinished. It's almost like a reflection in water, like something that is half dream, half reality. And of course, I love it because of the thistles that for me represent Scotland. Well, not only for me, they represent Scotland. So I love having that in there. inspirational woman series Camille Claudel was the lover of French sculptor Rodin. She didn't live a very happy life. She apparently was the artist that created some of the sculptures that then passed on as Rodin's. She ended up her life in uh, an asylum, like basically in a um, psychiatric hospital and all her work, her talent went unrecognised. In this painting, I imagined I was giving some of that recognition back to her. I really love her eyes. They seem to hold so much pride and defiance and the colour that I used all over her skin. And Virginia Woolf. And I have some of her writing from her work on her neck. It's like a sentence that's trailing off. And she is also part of my Inspirational Women series. I didn't think I was going to talk so much over this. That is why, as I said, I'm going to have the same video up with just music on the background if you don't want to hear me rambling away. But uh, I just wanted to say how important it is to put some time between your work and when you look at it again and decide whether you like it or not. Because for me, having some time go by between the creation of a piece and judging it, so to speak, is really quite crucial and does make quite a huge difference. This is the first painting where I started experimenting with a very expressive lip. As you can see, it goes beyond the actual lip line and I really love that and it kind of became a trademark of mine. And then we have these robins that look like they've almost been cut out and pasted on, which I actually really like. It's almost creating a surreal look. And the fact that you can't see her eyes, that she's looking down, they're kind of half open, uh, so you can't really read her expression. And then again, the robin on her head. Again, it looks like it's been cut out. Is it real? Is it a thought? Is it a dream? Or is it actually just sitting there on her head? This piece to 
together with uh, the next one were done more or less at the same time or very close together and this one ended up being the billboard for my first solo exhibition and I still have the poster and this one is kind of magical to me I really went into detail here by adding those extra elements of mushrooms, the squirrel, and I had so much fun doing it and was one of those paintings when you're impressed with your result that you think, you know, did I do that? This was, you know, that kind of imposter syndrome you get. also a tutorial over on Patreon and I liked how I kept the face very simple and allowed the hair to tell the story with the texture and with the drips and puddles and the galaxy effect. And this painting is in here just because I was really surprised with how the tiger turned out. I don't paint animals that often but I find that when I do it's a very kind of repetitive exercise possibly because of all the fur that's in there and I find it so relaxing and I'm always quite happy with the result. This is a monochromatic painting which is also a tutorial and I love it because of its simplicity. It just allows for the expression to shine through so much. And this is my last favourite painting of this list. If you would like to have a look at these originals, some of them are still for sale on my website and you can find that at the handle drawings in a drawer on my Instagram. It will be linked in my bio. Bye for now and we'll see you next time here on YouTube.